Hey, how's it going? James Wedmore here, and in today's video, I'm gonna take you through a simple three-part process for crafting your personal story. Stay tuned. Hey guys, we're here at uh, Wedmore headquarters and uh, I'm actually moments away from filming a new video series that I'm actually not gonna be uh, in the videos. I'm just the one who is kind of directing, producing, writing the scripts, etc. cetera. Um, and so I thought this was a perfect time to discuss this topic because a lot of what I wanna do in this video series to promote one of our offers is really be able to communicate the story uh, of our guest expert, uh, be able to get their story to really shine as a key component in our marketing training. And so the question first becomes why? Why is it so important that you have a story um, and, and why does it need to, to play a pivotal role in your marketing? And the, the reason for me first and foremost is that it's, it's extremely memorable like we all have heard that our brain is wired for storytelling right we pass down the ages that's how we communicate it was through the power of story but at the end of the day if you've ever watched a webinar watched a video gone through some sort of educational training notice how much your brain not only engages more when a story is told but how much more you remember about that person in regards to their story. You might not have remembered the seven secrets of marketing success they told, but you remember at one point they were broke, living in their parents' basement, eating Subway sandwiches every day, right? Which is part of the story that I tell. So this is really great to, to share this and you can see we've kind of go to the board behind me to help you craft your story. Um, because this is something that I thought, uh, I, I, I felt for the longest time I struggled with. It, it was really hard for me to come up with a personal story. I still don't think I'm great at it, uh, but I can really see the personal story in others, the people I coach and work with, and help them pull that out. Because again, it, it's what will make you memorable. It's what will make you stick out. So when you're sitting there either getting started or looking at who your competitors are or who the other people are doing what you're doing in the marketplace, how can I compete with that? How can I keep up with that person? Or, oh, they're younger or older or they've been doing this longer or they're more attractive or whatever the excuse or reason is when we compare ourselves to others, we can always come back to, well, I've got my story. I got the uniqueness of my story and no one else has that. And so really what we wanna do in this video is help you to flush that out. And so we're gonna kinda of create an exercise. So if you wanna take notes during and pause this video, that's gonna help you. Okay, and so what you wanna do is kinda of create three sections because that's really what I've done to divide our story into three parts. The before, the during, and the after. Okay, and even if you're somebody who's like, I don't have a story, James, I don't have a story. That's what I used to say. That's what I used to say to myself, that I don't really have a story. And when you dig hard enough and you look from the right angle, you really do. We all have a story uh, and it's gonna resonate with people, okay? So again, we're gonna break it down into three parts. The first part is the before. So we have to start at the before, right? You remember the, the 2 a.m. infomercials of the ab roller machines? They always got the before and after photos, the people that were like really overweight and all of a sudden overnight they got a they got a six pack, right? We all love watching those. So we need to demonstrate that with your story, whether you're communicating it on video, a webinar, or through an email newsletter. So the before of your story is really designed to generate empathy and understanding to your ideal avatar. So, you know, where were you at your lowest? Where were you when you were unhappy, frustrated, sad, alone, etc. Because empathy is going to be created. A connection is going to be created when you get to be real and vulnerable and share some of the hardest times that you've had to go, go through, a time that you struggled. And the more clear and specific that you can get with that, the more others are going to be able to say, oh my gosh, I'm going through that as well. Or, oh my goodness, this person really gets me. And that's gonna be that first phase to connect people. So the first thing I do is I look for the point where it was the lowest dip in my story. Where was I 
at the most desperate? Where was I at the most upset and frustrated? And then I wanted to get really specific with that. I have visual images of me breaking keys on my keyboard, pounding my fist into my keyboard because I was so frustrated, upset. It's one in the morning. I've been working 12 plus hours straight and I don't even know what the heck I'm working on. I don't even know what's getting done. Nothing is getting done. There are no results and I'm exhausted. I'm tired and I, I went to Subway that day and the guy who's making minimum wage at Subway is making more money than me and at the end of the day, he gets to go home. I envied the Subway sandwich maker more than me working 12, 14 hours a day. So that's an example of how I can start to pull something out of the before of what I was going through. And somebody listening to that might be like, oh my gosh, that sounds like me or I've been there too, right? It creates empathy and connection. Now the other way to look at this, which I think is gonna be really advantageous for you as well, is when you really get to know your avatar, your ideal customer, well, what is their lowest point? Because really what this is is about matching up your lowest point with the problem that they are experiencing right now. How can we get these to coincide? How can we get them to match up? Because if they don't relate to all the problems you've had, if they're not going through it right now, it's not really an engaging and relevant story for them. Okay, so you wanna think what are the pains, the low points that they're going through and how can your low point of your story match up with that? Okay, but obviously we don't wanna leave them there. We don't wanna leave the like dramatic down you know, problem side of our story. We want to take people on a journey. You've heard about people talking about the hero's journey of your story. And this is what we call the during. So why is it important to create the during? This is the middle. This is, this is what you've done to change the before and get to the after. We'll talk to the after in a second. But the, the during is where you establish credibility. If you want people to buy from you, if you want people just to listen to you, They've got to believe that you know what you're talking about. They've got to believe that you have some credibility. So the moment you say, I was in this downtrodden, blah, 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 yucky space, and then I went and I sought after every coach I could. I bought every program I could. I read over 300 books. I interviewed a thousand people. I went on this journey. I went on this you know, experiment. I did everything I could. I got obsessed about this. That experience gives you credibility. So what I want you to do right now on this section of your paper is to write down anything that you can come up with that will help to give you credibility. So what experience do you have? What, what degrees, certification, books, coaches, time in the trenches? Who have you worked for? Who have you been interviewed by? What did you do? What experiences have you had to give you credibility? Okay, and you wanna really write that down and say, how can I weave that into my story? Because your story really is designed to do two things. Overall, it helps you be, become memorable and stand out, but it's designed to create empathy and understanding, a connection with your audience, and simultaneously create credibility. And then, of course, that takes us to the last segment of your story, the after, right? If you go look at the before and after photos of the fitness people, they're sitting there watching the infomercial, they see the overweight person, they're like, hey, that looks like me, and then they see the guy with the six pack, and they're like, I want that. So that's exactly what we want to do with the after. We need to describe what life is like for you now so that it creates a desired outcome for your audience. What is it that you are doing differently now? How is life better for you? What results do you now have that makes the before, the pain, the, the, the down piece of your, of your story non-existent? And you wanna share that here, okay? And that is kind of the basics of how we can start to come up with a story. But your story, when it's all said and done, in order to be memorable, needs to have in what I believe two components in, on top of this. First of all, it should be able to be said, in, a, in small sound bites. Someone could be able to reflect and repeat your story in 30 seconds or less. Oh, he was living on his sister's couch, he had a broken arm, and then, you know, blah, blah, blah. And that was uh, Lewis Howes' story. And I've remembered that story for years. He's been telling the same story. He was, he was a professional athlete, he got injured, he's on his sister's couch, he stumbles upon LinkedIn, trying to get a job, all of a sudden he's learned all this stuff about LinkedIn, and here he is offering this training to you. That was his story, and it was memorable, it was simple, but it was also very concise. You know, so you're not trying to, to weave in a novel of your story, but how do you bring it down into concise sound bites? And then the last piece is how do you get specific with your story? 
When I give an example of buying a Subway sandwich, living off of Subway sandwiches so that I could have the foot, the six inches for lunch and then the, the rest of the six inches for dinner, because that's all I could afford was $5 a day, I'm getting very specific. Banging my fist on the keyboard is a very specific visual. So with that, what are elements of your story that if we were to film it, if we were to come in as a, as a filmmaking crew, what would we document? What would the camera catch? What would it look like? What would it, you know, what would it sound like? What would it smell like? What, what would we experience with all of our senses? And how can we get really, really specific with that? And how can you then communicate that to your audience? So, three part simple outline to create your story so that it can be simple and memorable so that you can stick out from the rest of the competition no matter what, who your competition is, okay? But also so you can build empathy and connection with your audience, create your credibility, and then create the desire for your service, for your offerings. I'm James Wetmore. If you have any questions about the topic we just went over, don't hesitate to leave your questions and comments below this video. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. And hey, look at that. We did this all in one take. See you next time.